Hey, True Believers. Chris Mack coming at you today with Dark Knight's Batman the Dawnbreaker. And just like with the Devastator, we get that cool shiny cover, which does not play well in the light, so I apologize for that. It's just I gotta get some more lights, you know what I mean? But it's a gorgeous cover by Jason Fabok, and this is part of the uh, Dark Knight's Metal series. The first appearance of the Dawnbreaker is in Dark Days the Casting, number one, I believe. It's kind of in a flashback, but this is his first full appearance, I believe. And we get his backstory, which we're going to dive into now. The print date on this book was December 2017. The writer is Sam Humphreys. The artist is Ethan Van Skyver. The colorist was Jason Wright, and the letter was Tom Napolitano. And Batman was created by Bill Finger with Bob Kane. So we're in the dark multiverse. We see the Dawnbreaker kind of thinking back to what brought him to where he is. And we see these are the stories from the dark multiverse that should never be. Witness the rise of the Dark Knights. So we're on Earth negative 32, which is part of the dark multiverse. And we see Bruce floating in space. He goes, how did I feel in that moment when my world changed? When I stood there helpless as my mom and dad's blood was running into the gutter, I felt nothing. Like the sky and the ground part broke apart and all that was left was a void as big as everything. And that void was inside me. I didn't feel anything, not even fear. And I like how once we hit this beat, we see a green streak zip across the paneling. And immediately we see Bruce Wayne. You have the ability to overcome great fear. Welcome to the Green Lantern's core. Now this panel reminds me, for those of you that read Blackest Nights, when uh, the rings start recruiting other people around the world to take out the Black Lanterns, the yellow ring actually seeks out Batman and says you have the ability to instill great fear, but he shrugs the ring off. So I just kind of like that throwback, and I actually think Ethan Van Skyver did the art on, on uh, was it him? I can't remember, let me know down in the comments. But we see Bruce's face. He goes, I didn't overcome fear. It was obliterated from me. So immediately, he has his uniform, and he jumps at Joe Chill, and he goes, you bastard! I'm not helpless now. Die! But as Jeff Johns established, the first rule of the Green Lantern Corps is you cannot do lethal force. It's not permitted unless the uh, Guardians allow it. He goes, I, I don't care. Do what I say. Willpower at 100. Willpower at 117. I just felt the void inside me. So yeah, I like how the, the suspense is built up here. And then we see this harrowing construct. He goes, he deserves to die. Willpower at 181. Error. Willpower exceeds malfunction. And we start to see kind of this corruption of the ring and even the rings text bubbles change and it goes lethal force enabled and he takes Joe chill out and oh my god that that is hard to look at Ethan Van Skyver and the art team here just did a great job of showing how what would happen to an unhinged Bruce Wayne without any type of anchoring because at this point he takes off he goes, all I ever, he knows, one thing I would have given up, I would have given up everything for my parents to return. And he goes, ring, bring back my mom and dad. Activating. And we get zombie versions of Martha and Thomas. And it's just, whoo, that, that's hard. But he realizes that these are not his parents. So he takes off, and you see the rage and the pain in his face and I like how the art tells the story without a whole lot of text bubbles he goes I would have traded everything so I didn't have to feel so helpless 
so alone. So here again, we're seeing like, what is all this and why is he floating alone? None of this makes sense. But before we can say anything, we notice that he's now here on the rooftop with Commissioner Gordon. He goes, they called me a hero at first. And listen to the way he talks to who's supposed to be his best friend. Gordon, I advise you to remain polite with me. The last cop who threatened me regretted it. And so he's talking about there's these missing persons, thought that maybe he'd find it interesting. And then he goes, that title, meaning hero, didn't last long. And we get this sort of canted Dutch angle of Green Lantern taking on Scarecrow. <coughs> and what's significant <clears throat> about this panel is this is a throwback to Showcase Presents number, what number was it? 22 from 1959, which is the first appearance of the Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Now, there was a Green Lantern that predated him, Alan Scott. I don't remember what year it was, but it was all American comics. And then they brought him, uh, Hal, along later. And he goes, I killed without remorse or boundaries. Why do they deserve to live when my parents didn't? Why? So I just like that subtle nod to the fans there with Green Lantern. He even has the, the what do you call it, the rocket there. But because his ring's different, he doesn't have that uh, weakness to yellow. Now, Gordon's starting to question him, saying, what happened to the penguin? And we see he smashes down the iceberg lounge. And I like how the penguin goes, Christ, he's going to murder us. Kill him first. Lantern, what did you do to him? Just look up, Jimmy. Now, before we get into more of this, we see how the Dawnbreaker's powers work. He goes, ring, initiating blackout. My ring worked by willpower. And I'm willful to an extreme. But the void was inside me too. I cracked open the ring and pushed it past the light. I let the darkness inside me escape. And I like how all this is done in sort of a voiceover with the blackness because you don't really get to see what happens to the goons. But you do get to understand when um, Lantern says, see, like I said, just look up, Jimmy. So Penguin was brought into the void of space. Now what ultimately happens to him in the void of space, other than obviously asphyxiation, read the book. Now, Gordon's really starting to uh, put it together. He finds out that Green Lantern is Bruce Wayne. He goes, aren't you tired of feeling like this, Bruce? Shut up, Gordon. You have a daughter, right? Sad. Why does he say sad? I'm not going to spoil it. Now look at this paneling. I like this canted angle here. And the Guardians are saying, you're going to hand over your ring. You've corrupted it, and it can corrupt the entire core. And he goes, whoa, this is wild. There's a ton of you. But ring, initiating blackout. Now look at this. That is absolutely beautiful. Now I'm wondering if Sam Humphreys and Skyver here, I wonder if they got the idea for his constructs from that old image comics, The Darkness. Because his power was is he would black out everything and then all these demons would come and attack. And this is very akin to it. But look at how helpless the lanterns look in scale to all of this madness. That is gorgeous. Now what I find kind of poignant here is Bruce is in, he starts to live in the cave underneath Wayne Manor because he's talking about how he wants to be in the darkness. He goes, I don't want to be Bruce Wayne. I don't want to be Green Lantern. Because feeling submerged in shadow, like I never left the cave under my mom and dad's house with the darkness and the bats, I became Dawnbreaker. And here I like how the team actually came up with their own saying, just like every lantern does. He goes, with darkest black, I choke the light. No brightest day escapes my sight. 
I turn to the dawn to midnight. Beware my power, Dawnbreaker's might. And that is just gorgeous, seeing him like this with all the bats in the background. Beautiful piece of artwork there. And then we're finally explained why he's floating in space. I don't really want to give it away. I know this is an older book, but I don't like to spoil him. So please pick up the book and find out what all this means. But in the void here, in a sense, it kind of feels like the void looks back and a voice comes. Nice earth you got here. How's it working out for you? And this is kind of obvious that the Batman who laughs is the one that's recruiting all these other Batman from the dark multiverse. And he's talking about he's already recruited the murder machine, the Red Death. And what I like is he says, you know, you'll be best friends, I'm sure. You have so many things in common. Revenge, justice, first names. <laughs> So he's very much something the Joker would say. He goes, if you do what Barbados says, he'll spare you from oblivion and give you back what you desire most. Your parents back alive. All my Lord demands is your obedience. Will you kneel or will you die? Hmm, not much of a choice there, right? So interesting there. Now we come to Earth Zero, which is our Earth. And I kind of wish we could have gotten more of a showdown with Don Breaker and Hal Jordan. Because he's like, hey, no one defaces my signs in my city. What does he mean? Read the book. He goes, he had a power ring, but I didn't feel anything. Not even fear. He goes, I have to warn you. I've killed Green Lanterns before, and I'll do it again. Now, what I like about this Don Breaker is here obviously time has passed and kind of just look at his face the way he's kind of ripped up and zombie looking so i like how here not only has he corrupted the ring his soul but now physically we can see a reflection of his insides on the outside so it was a very cool choice to show that now the constructs come lantern's like ring get this thing off me constructs of an unknown composition Ring power is not operating correctly. Impossible. Don't tell me impossible, just fight back. Malfunction, Hell Jordan. There is no light. There is no light. So I like the use of repetition and how everything just goes straight to black. Now this is kind of how Lantern gets into the fight in the main book, I don't want to give that away. But let's just view this beautiful splash page oh my god that is great we see this twisted batman and instead of seeing grain of the willpower we just see this you know devoid of nothing that's just coming over coast city i like this little touch of the lantern in the background showing the dawn breaker emblem that is cool and then all these constructs just nightmares of the void inside bruce that what caused him to be what he is and he goes a world of light a city of hope disgusting let them feel helpless let them fill the void let them fill like me who so I know in terms of metal, everyone's favorite new villain is the Batman Who Laughs. I'm guilty of that too. I love that character. I love the aesthetics of the Dawnbreaker and the Red Death. But in terms of storytelling, this is one of those stories that's like one of those great stories, even though it is so tragic and heartbreaking. Kind of like uh, Macbeth or Romeo and Juliet where it's a great story but it's tragic and heart-wrenching. You feel for this Bruce Wayne. Now, you can't agree with his choices, but you at least see what led him into madness and the consequences of what happens when you let the void inside you instead of keeping it at bay. 
And that's why the Dawnbreaker holds a special place in my heart in terms of storytelling. Absolutely amazing comic book, guys. Now, if you've enjoyed this comic book, please, first and foremost, support your local comic shop and see if they can get a copy of this in store for you so you can pick it up. If not, then you know you can check out other avenues. If you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little green lantern bell next to subscribe. That way as we continue to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel and we love to hear your feedback and just have a dialogue with everybody down in the comments below or on our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description below. With all that said, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with us. I hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, true believers.